it is difficult to define this man. Very original, very creative. He was a truly liberal person. He was a complete man. Charismatic. Kind of a teacher students dream of. He was special, Vasantan. Vasantan made Madurai a wee bit richer. Vasantan was a very important person. Vasantan never seriously intended to be a teacher. Of course, he was a brilliant student of English literature. In 1959, he passed his BA with distinction from American college. Straight, he went to try his luck with Tamil cinema. Mr. Vasantan wanted to become a film director. He had also met the famous uh, director Beam Singh. But I think Beam Singh uh, discouraged him because he was a brilliant first class. Why do you come to this field? Go back. Discouraged by Bhim Singh, he joined Madras Christian College for his MA the same year. There, uh, there were four Scottish professors. Their pronunciation was very difficult. And he told me, at least you are not understand. But I never hear anything from them. He was more of a useful teacher to all of us, the other nine, than my own teachers. Vasantan would explore Madras in the company of Shekhar, who played chess like a grandmaster and sang like C.H. Atma. Vasantan and I walked the two kilometers to the station and traveled 20 to 25 kilometers into the city, go to the beach, see the sights, go to movies. We returned only well after midnight. Students had to sign in if they returned after the 10 p.m. curfew. Vasantan had to charm the security guard to let us enter 10 p.m. instead of 1 a.m. when we came back. But then Vasantan could charm anyone, especially security guards and women. If academic distinction in the first place had prevented Vasantan from entering the world of Tamar cinema, this time, ironically, his failure to complete MA earned him a teaching job. He was about to take one of his uh, final uh, MA papers, he was not very sure. So he said, uh, no, I'm not going to write. So this means he couldn't pass his uh, MA. So it's because of his first class BA in English literature, he was appointed a tutor in English and the following year he completed. In 1962, he was appointed lecturer by, uh, by Dr. McPhee. Vasantan would soon become popular with both students and teachers. While I was in the college, I also uh, decided to start a campus student magazine. Uh, it was called The Motivator. I got a group of students around and it was not an official college magazine. It was a voluntary effort by a group of students and uh, Vasantan was appointed the advisor from the staff for that and that ran this magazine ran for three four years uh, subsequently so uh, even in bringing out a magazine editing it he would help us some of his drawings and cartoons would appear in the uh, motivator magazine which we had professor Bennett Albert one of the wittiest of professors was his head of the department. The bon vivant Harvardian, Dr. Chandran Devanesan, readily took him into his company. Dr. M. A. Tangaraj, the win-win physicist, would play field hockey with him. The elderly and saintly MacPhail, the principal of the college, would choose only his company to go to films. Yet his heart lay elsewhere. He would experiment, staging plays. And then when the murder in the cathedral was offered to him to be directed, and he had absolute freedom. He said, you know, the theme of murder in the cathedral is the, the bishop is being assassinated. So we will create a, a cathedral atmosphere, an altar in the backdrop. We don't want any expensive uh, settings. He said, what would you like to say? No, we will go in for very in inexpensive you know, I have uh, kind of worked out. This is the rough final outcome. Bar the door! Bar the door! 
unbar the doors throw open the doors i will not have the house of prayer the church of christ the sanctuary turned into a fortress the church shall be open even to our enemies open the door it was real fantasy fantasy come true abraham irali his colleague and later founder of aside magazine reviewing the play would compliment his debut performance saying wasn't then transformed beckett from a rose water idealist into a tortured and torturous person and thus improved the play considerably as for the sets they surely designed by an artist were beautiful and that is my complaint about them wasn't then would never again go for overwhelming sets in his plays Surprisingly and for some strange reason Vasantham would leave Madras Christian College in 1968 and join American College as a lecturer Dr M A Tangaraj the physicist had already become its principal Vasantham was 34 he was already contributing to many national magazines he was a cartoonist caricaturist and a short story writer in English but his passion was English drama The next 25 years he would continue to teach, perform and radically redefine the role of an English teacher. After 4 or 5 decades, his students who are now in their 60s and 70s get excited recalling the kind of presence he commanded in the classroom. The first day as a professor walked in. They said uh, his name was uh, Mr. Washington. Oh, spring. Then as the Tamil said, "Day Vasanthan na nadri mada spring." Uh, he just walked into the classroom like a breeze, came there and sat on the table with one hand, one la- leg just hanging about, neatly dressed. So I'm Vasanthan. You know his voice, how it's uh, real breaks. I'm going to be teaching uh, Shakespeare to you. Amu yana kevach pata ka dandu oru. ஒரு முப்பத்தி ரெண்டு பேர்கிட்ட பேசுகிற ரகசியம் மாதிரி தான் ஞாபகம் வருது அது அதுதான் அவருடைய முதல் க குவாலிட்டி டு புள்ளியூயின் ஹஸ்கியா அந்த ஒரு லோட்டோன் வந்து அப்படியே வந்து ஆளை இழுத்து எல்லாரையும் கிளாஸ் ரூமில் வந்து முன்னாடி ஃபார்வர்ட் மூமெண்ட்டுக்கு கொண்டாடுறதுன்றதுல இருந்து ஆரம்பிக்கிறது டீச்சிங் இங்கிலீஷ் லிட்ரேச்சர் fondness for uh, shakespearean plays and even when he used to teach uh, us shakespeare he would enact some of the scenes from the plays say from the merchant of venice or some other play like that so uh, there was a time in our college where some of us would uh, bunk classes of other <laughs> teachers uh, i was very interested in economics as such really but english was the subject because of vasanthan we would never miss is it very distinctly he was teaching us hamlet at that time second year and the best part of uh, mr jv was that he didn't require that uh, shakespeare's textbook at all you know he was able to reel off dialogue line by line you know without ever having to refer to the textbook and uh, he was uh, teaching us uh, antony and cleopatra and at one time uh, he was taking us through the death scenes of uh, antony and cleopatra and one guy in the class wept he was uh, crying and uh, some students looked at him and kind of you know uh, uh, made fun of him but mr was then stopped and he said listen guys i don't want first classes or second classes out of my teaching I was longing for those tears out of my teaching and today his name is Madhivan and the fellow who cried Madhivan and made my day today and thank you Madhivan and why did you do this he asked sir uh, I could visualize the scenes so the Mr. Washington when he when he explained things he he could make people see what he was saying His long-standing colleague in the English department and a popular actor would add this element of irony. The only time I taught drama was when Vasanthan was sick. His uh, he had a heart attack and he couldn't come to the college for 3 months and I had to teach. 
uh, Antony and Cleopatra. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I killed them both in the first act itself. Another senior colleague would say, I would not say he's a great scholar of Shakespeare, but he lived Shakespeare. He will read Shakespeare from the point of view of an Indian. Shakespeare made Vasantam go far beyond his English fraternity. One more Shakespeare about the word personal. And the court is going to wait. Poor can the cat and may murder the cat a patient. Allow the yearly angelum. Our Sadar and Mani the Hilke put it with Solanumo. I walk on the way. Yetabum Belanga will end the Solamata. Vasantan was a bohemian, entertaining students, colleagues, and artists. There was only one teacher, or one professor, who would invite us home and interact with us and listen to us very patiently. Classrooms, a pay make classroom order, would hear the day. Sandra Day, La Free and the Nam, Beatle of the Bangada, either in the subject like Gaka than Sandra, Abdur Chinna, Smile Order, Sandra Anga on the Pesce. Varia, bring in the Sabi. If you want to go to the Armas and Time Pula, you can go to the Armas and Time Friendship grew, and he was no more a teacher for me, he was my friend also. And uh, when I met him many years later, he showed me a photograph uh, which was taken in his room. Uh, it is with me now, and I can show it to you. This is a picture taken of from his room in the hostel with all his books in the background. And I used to go and pick up books to read from his uh, collection and go back uh, and return it later. So our friendship was such that when he moved out of the campus, uh, I used to go and visit him in his house also. And uh, we used to go and see films together. I went in the night once on my motorcycle, I had a motorcycle in those days, and threw stones at his window to call him out to go to see a Michael Caine film. Because in those days, uh, a lot of Michael Caine films are there, and we were highly impressed with Michael Caine. And I took him, I used to take him out for night shows uh, to see films. With Mr. Washington, nothing was a sin. You know, drinking is not a very big sin. You know, he would offer us drink. There, he lived in many houses in Madurai. In every house I visited, to every house I go, I say a line from Shakespeare, <laughs> like a password. Fair is fallen, fall is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. Damn good! <laughs> ask, I think you should ask Mrs. Vasanthan. And he really enjoyed every time I'm walking into the house with the saying some line. <laughs> he really enjoyed those uh, you know, moments, you know, when I come there. Beyond the classroom, the best part of his time he would spend in staging dramas. He would reorganize the existing theatre group in American College and call it Curtain Club. The objective, he said, entertainment with a message. And his preference, modern English plays. So for him, drama is a genre, drama is performance. Of the 70 or more plays he staged, the most popular and well-received were J.B. Priestley's An Inspector Calls, two of Bernard Shaw's plays, Arms and the Man, and You Never Can Tell, Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest, Ben Travers' A Cuckoo in the Nest, Agatha Christie's murder mystery play, The Mouse Trap, Garson Cannon's Born Yesterday, and Ayn Rand's Night of January 16th. Why mostly comedies? And he wants people to laugh at, uh, when you're watching an English play. One of the things I loved about Vasantan was when we did theater together, Arms and the Man and an Inspector Calls and these theater pieces where Vasantan understood that when people were laughing, they thought they were laughing at the people on stage, but he knew they were really laughing at themselves. And the comedy was such a wonderful way to bring home to people some of the truths about how we interact as humans and how we behave in the world. And his sense of humor is so evident in all these productions. He's really set a trend in Madurai. 
when theater was something very oppressive in madurai the tamil theater was oppressive the tamil theater talked only about grave issues uh, very serious uh, social themes but he loved satire he loved pungent humor how did these plays go with his tamil speaking madurai audience so first time he started listening to an english drama in the american college auditorium and how much we understood that you know no we are all very young and we are still struggling to understand the language and you know trying to figure out what is going on the stage and also the poor pa system and everything is for that then regularly he started putting out like inspector calls importance of being earnest and everything i remember seeing the advertisement of the importance of being earnest when i was in the school and i thought madurai had become a happening place english plays are being staged because we were used to seeing only tamil plays and that would also be far and few between um, staged at lakshmi sundaram hall I bought my tickets and went over to see the play and was totally bowled over by the way that whole play was done oh the hall was always full it was always full and it, it the audience was appreciative they always you know when they recognized you coming out or something and uh, it became such a problem for me we used to live in a place called somasundram colony and according to me i didn't feel that somasundram colony people went to plays <laughs> which is a very haughty uh, comment but i didn't understand that and then one day when i was returning from uh, school one of the gentlemen said ma'am nalla adichinga paarunga stage la <laughs> and i was shocked i was just so shocked in uh, a play where there was sergio sarana upon captain blanchley arms of the man the last line what a man is he a man everybody went home repeating these lines next day class they came and they wrote on the board don't worry sergio we will get reina for you because i lost reina for blanchley the students know that was uh, you know why it is because they understood the play english theater abindrathukku and nerathile madurila enna relevance irundhuchu nu kuda sila peru yosichaanga enna relevance irukku nu sila peru yosichaanga ana eppoyume or packed auditorium irundhirukku avarude plays ellathukku irundhuchu english kaga vandha or elite audience irundhathu ana english cinema madurila paaka porom sadharanamana aatkalum kuda anga vandanga Vasantan, like Shakespeare, understood the audience, the pulse of the audience. But at the same time, he lifted them up slowly to enjoy a play like Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Vasantan conducted all his experiments only with the proscenium stage. His ability as an artist helped him to design everything creatively, the set, the costume and even the hairstyle his brilliant storyboards were treats in themselves vasantan however would not allow the artist in him overdo his stage he believed in simple sets and good acting much else he would leave for the audience to imagine I remember on uh, on Inspector Calls he said we're going to do a very simple stage set. It's going to be very abstract. Sometimes it's going to be the exterior, sometimes it's going to be the interior. But he said people will use their imagination and people love to use their imagination. And in fact that's true. That's one of the greatest things about theater is that people understand that. Uh or something always hopped on words. The words must be heard loud and uh, clear and also the acting. very simple settings you know uh, for example there was a play uh, you never you yeah, never can tell it opens with a with a girl screaming from a dentist ch- chair so we borrowed the chair from the barber's uh, barber shop across the road so the willing suspension of disbelief you know, shakespeare <laughs> okay strikes again so nobody knew that we had borrowed the chair from uh, mohan Shigegrutta Nilayam in Goripalayam. What kind of a director was he? Very funnily, 
in my first play, I had the role of a private bartender, you know, ensuring that I served drinks and I had absolutely no clue how that had to be done. So whenever I used to pour, Vasanthan used to laugh and say that that just shows that your exposure is not enough to real life Bharat, that's all I can say. And then he would exactly come and tell me how to pour it, to what extent to pour it, what, what exactly each of those quantities mean and in different situations how it has to be handled. And more importantly, when he used to direct others, I've always noticed that for any simple act, right, even sitting in a sofa and reclining, he would be able to come up with three or four different poses as to how uh, one could actually recline or how one could deliver a sentence or a line and how one could actually deliver a punchline without much ado. So many things. So that was my first introduction to how direction actually gets done. He had that kind of uh, you know visualization that you could see which angle should be good, how the dialogue should be delivered, how the tone should be, whether it should be in a murmuring stage or really loud, staring at that person, everything, very in detail he would do. I think Mrs. Ratnam and Mr. Nedumaran were the star actors we had. They both really gelled very well with what the director, they are directors, actors I must say, Nedumaran and uh, he believed in a, in, a, in a process. His casting was excellent. He chose the right persons for the right uh, character. So for three weeks, he will let us uh, read the script, read the lines. Important word, read. Don't worry about emotion. Read the lines. Then the fourth week, he would say, speak the lines. We'll have the script, but we'll have to speak it with the right emotion. Even then he won't interfere. Then we move to the stage and we had the script on our hands and uh, he told us the movement. Uh, we'll move and he will make some corrections. That will go on for a couple of weeks and then we had to throw away the uh, script. Then there will be a prompter. So this is how it's a, it's a process. I would say that for him we were not a caste, we were an individual person interpreting a character and he judged according to that and he was willing to discuss. That is what I say, I have never seen this characteristic in any other directors. They will always be telling us how to portray a character the way they saw it. Mr. Vasanthan wanted you to portray the character as you read the play, as you saw it, how you would deliver the lines. So, he didn't say that his way of interpreted, interpreting something was the only way and that was the best. If there was something that we were doing um, contrary to what he would expect, he'll wait till you finish your scene and come down and sit and when somebody else was acting, he'd slowly come and sit with you and discuss your role and he would ask or suggest do you think this will go down with the audience or do you think this is how that person would have um, actually spoken and there were so many little things that he asked you and then you it was a conversation I have never ever seen him standing in the auditorium shouting at the actors on the stage. However, the real heat was felt only by his wife, Padmini Vasantan. After two, three months, he used to take for one, put up, to put up one play. And uh, all the actors were very wrong. He used to complain and say, every step I have to guide them. And uh, I allowed him to, and I used to get worried because he was straining himself too much, come every day late. Uh, he was in charge of everything, stage, costumes, um, uh, lighting, everything he was in charge of. So it was very demanding for him and I used to leave him and not uh, expect any help from him in any way. Was the Tamil theatre hostile to him? No, not at all. Not only did they positively understand his purpose, but also did welcome him to join hands with them. Yidan mola maakhe, angila alladi merkitiye naadhangal rukliya, 
தமிழ் சூழலில் நாங்கள் வந்து பார்க்கக்கூடிய ஒரு வாய்ப்பை ஏற்படுத்தி கொடுக்குறாருங்கிறதா தான் நான் அதை பார்க்குறேன் அது ரொம்ப முக்கியமானது இப்போ இந்த நாடகங்களெல்லாம் பார்க்கும் பொழுது நான் அந்த நாடகாசிரியர்களுடைய செயல்பாடுகள்ங்கிறது இருக்கு இல்லையா இவர் மூலமாக அவர்களை நான் பார்க்கக்கூடிய ஒரு பார்வைங்கிறது எனக்கு வந்து கிடைக்கும் நாடகக்காரங்கிற முறையில் நான் இதே நாடகங்களை செய்வனா அப்படிங்கிறது என்கிட்ட கேட்டிங்கன்னா நான் வந்து அதுக்கு என்னுடைய பதில் வேற ஒன்றாகத்தான் இருக்கும் அந்த அளவில் அவர் பேராசிரியர் வசந்தன் ஆங்கில நாடகங்கள் போட்டதனால் மட்டும்தான் அவர் தடித்து தெரிகிறார் அவர் சாதாரணமாக வேற ஒரு நாடகங்கள் போட்டிருந்தார் ஆனால் இந்த நாடகங்கள் போட்டுக்கிட்டு இருக்கக்கூடிய வெவ்வேறு வகையான அலைகள் இருக்குது பாருங்க அதில் ஒருவராக இருந்திருப்பார் மதுரையில் ஆங்கில நாடகங்கள் என்றால் இன்றைக்கும் பேராசிரியர் வசந்தன் என்று சொல்லக்கூடிய அந்த நிலையை உருவாக்கி இருக்கிறதுங்கிறது அவருடைய ஆங்கில நாடகங்கள் தான் அப்படிங்கிறதுல நான் உறுதியாக இருக்கிறேன் லண்டனில் போய் அந்த பிளேயர் போய் பார்க்கப்படும் ஒரு இங்கிலீஷ் பிளேயர் போய் பார்க்கவே முடியாது இல்லையா நிச்சயமாக கிடையவே கிடையாது அப்போ அது வந்து இந்தியனை தாக்குறது எப்படி இந்தியனை தாக்குறது எப்படிங்கிறத வந்து ரொம்ப தெளிவாக அதாவது பண்ணியிருக்காரு அதை எல்லாம் அவ்வளோ பிரமாதமாக இருக்கும் அது வந்து அவர் வந்து சில பல விஷயங்களை வந்து நவாப் ராஜமாணிக்கம் எம்ஆர் ராதா டிகேஎஸ் பிரதர்ஸ் எல்லாம் எடுத்திருக்காரு அது அந்த மூமெண்ட்டு பல மா மல மூமெண்ட்லாம் எடுத்திருக்கதாக அவர் எங்கிட்ட பேசியிருக்காரு ஒரு தரம் அதனால் அவருக்கு இந்த எப்படி இந்த சீன் சேஞ்ச் பண்ணுறது போகிறது எல்லாமே பல இந்தியனைஸ் பண்ணியிருக்காரு அது வந்து ரொம்ப முக்கியமானது இதெல்லாம் வந்து வெஸ்டர்னில் கிடையாது பர்டிகுலர்லி நாட் ஹி டிடி இன் மெட்ராஸ் ஹி டிடி இன் மதுரை அதுதான் ஒரு பெரிய கிளாசிக்கல் எண்பத்தி எட்டில் இந்த நாடக கலை விழா நடத்தும் பொழுது அவற்றையும் போய் ஏன்னா அங்கே உள்ள ஒரு மூத்த நாடக நெறியாளுநர் அப்படிங்கிற அடிப்படையில் அவற்றை ஒரு நாடகம் பண்ண முடியுமா அப்படிங்கிறத கேட்கறதுக்காக போனேன் அப்போ நாங்கள் போட்ட நாடகங்களை பற்றி எல்லாம் அவர் வந்து பேசினார் கேள்விப்பட்டிருக்கிறார் நிறைய செஞ்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்கிறீங்கன்னு நானும் அதில் கலந்து கொள்வது ரொம்ப மகிழ்ச்சி அப்படின்னாரு அப்போ அவர் வந்து சைலன்ஸ் த கோட்ரிஸ் இன் செஷன் அப்படிங்கிறத தமிழில் ஏன்னா அவர் போட்டிருந்தாரானால் அதுதான் அவர் போட்ட முதல் தமிழ் நாடகமாக இருந்திருக்கும் டு தி எக்ஸ்டென்ட் ஹி லவ் இங்கிலீஷ் ட்ராமா ஹி லவ் சினிமா டூ ஆஸ் அ யங்ஸ்டர் ஹி வாஸ் அன் ஆவிட் சினிமா கோவா நான் வந்து சினிமா வெரியன் வெரி தான் சினிமாவில் ஸோ அது என்ன மோசமாக இருந்தாலும் சரி கடைசி வரையும் உட்காந்து பார்த்து அதில் பின்னாடி அதை டிஸ்கஸ் பண்ணும் வர்ற வழியில் It was Regal Theatre in Madurai that schooled him early in Hollywood movies. Madurai ke vandittu Regal Talkies la English padam odudun sonanga. Seri nu pone Regal Talkies ku poi simple ah solradanga I fell in love. So Regal Talkies ingiradhu engalukku life la oru part of it mari. The time was early 1950s and Regal would still be showing Clark Gable's Gone with the Wind. Humphrey Bogart's Casablanca, Cecil DeMille's Samson and Delilah, Mervyn Roy's Quo Vadis, Gary Cooper's Dallas, and Gregory Peck's Gunfighter. These films would leave a new sense of aesthetics in him. Equally, he was enthusiastic about Tamil cinema. Vasantan himself would recollect his old heroes. MKT was a very good thing to do. I was a gentle man. அதில் பர்டிகுலர்லி அம்பிகாபதி ரொம்ப பியூட்டிஃபுல்லாக இருக்கும் அவர் ஆக்டிங் பாட்டு பியூ சின்னப்பா அவர் லேடிஸுக்கு பிடிக்காது ஆனால் ஜென்ட்ஸுக்கு பிடிக்கும் ஏன்னா வந்து அது ஒரு மாதிரி முரட்டுத்தனமாக இது பண்ணுவோம் அது ஒரு மாதிரி நல்லாயிருக்கும் அப்போ வந்து எம் கே ராதா வந்தார் எம் கே ராதா வந்து அது ஒரு மாதிரி டைப் ஆஃப் ஹீரோ ஹீரோ ஜென்டில் பார்க்கவும் நல்லாயிருக்கும் ஹேண்ட்ஸமாக ஸோ அந்த படங்கள் அவருடைய படங்கள் அப்புறம் அவருக்கு வில்லனாக வந்து ரஞ்சன் அப்புறம் வி ஹீரோ விட்டுட்டு வில்லன் தான் ரசிக்க ஆரம்பிச்சிட்டாங்க அவன் இந்த குதிரையில் ஏறுறது இந்த குதிரையில் ஏறுறது வந்து அதுக்கப்புறம் யாருமே அது மாதிரி செய்யுது அந்த வந்து அப்படி தட்டுவான் குதிரையை அப்படியே சைடில் ஓடி வந்து அப்படி குதிச்சு ஏறுவான் மேலே His movie madness would later take shape into film appreciation and film journalism. He would prolifically write on both Hollywood and Tamil cinema. It was a time when um, very few people were taking cinema seriously. And Vasanthan was an exception. He was a pioneer in writing serious uh, matters serious articles about tamil cinema at least there were some writing about english cinema but certainly not on tamil cinema but wasn't then did 
at that time pe- there were no people were not looking at film critically but he did look at uh tamil cinema from the european cinema perspective but tamil cinema was very very different and this he pointed out he pointed out in his articles that if you want your film to make any impact in terms of the ideology that it contained you have to make it realistic and i, w- I wish we could collect all those articles uh, and publish them now in a form of an anthology because it will give an idea of uh, looking at tamil cinema in the 60s by somebody who was uh, sensitive to these issues in 1969 in a seminal paper he said tamil cinema has taken over the musical tradition almost completely from drama not all sentiments should or can be expressed in song tamil cinema evokes as many sentiments as possible within 3 hours crude vulgarity has become a substitute for sex sex on the screen ought to appear natural audience simply are not able to appreciate creativity or novelty realism upsets them ingmar bergman could make them nervous wrecks unimaginative directors and screenwriters and unresponsive audience have kept the tamil cinema from reaching the level of bengali and malayalam films criticizing the avant-garde excesses in india he would engage the big wigs in the field in 1975 in an imaginary interview in film fair vasantham would sarcastically rename shyam benegal as shyam bengali basu chatterji as bhasu chatteringly and girish karnad as rigish corner taking vasantham seriously girish karnad would humorously write a response in the same tone and with the same name rigish corner he would joke that vasantham interviewed an impostor and not he vasantham certainly qualifies to be a pioneer in film studies cinema critics at the borderla film critics at the borderla avaru avarude work romba pioneering work pioneering work nan nenikiren pioneering work in the sense vandu serious study of study of popular cinema abingiradhe emerge aagada or kaalagattam avaru eludhana kaalagattam pinadi dhaan ashish nandi adha aarambichu vechaaru adukapram mss pandian chengade chakravarthi ivanga tamil cinema pathi eludha aarambichaanga even in our mma classes uh, they were able to introduce one course on film appreciation and that course was handled by uh, oh. professor jv from the beginning vasantham was very much involved in the promotion of film culture when the famous ammu swaminathan mother of ina fame captain lakshmi was promoting the madras film society vasantham was in the forefront supporting her activities this was in early 1960s later he would in a big way support yatharta film society in madurai avrodan sambandhapattirukkira kaalangalla avar yatharta vandu nariya neram pesirkar 96 la vandu india cinema vinda ulaga cinema vin nootraandu vidakaga avaru da idu panna balu mahendra da inaugurate pannaru ivar da adutha speaker enna na eppadi ulagathula kada cinema la ilakkiyathil irundhu eppadi cinema vandhathu அப்படிங்கிறது பல ரெஃபரன்சஸ் கொண்டு வந்து கொடுத்து அதனுடைய நியூவான்சஸ் ஏஸ்தட்டிக் அது வந்து இன்னும் சினிமா எவ்வளோ பெஸ்ட்டாக இருந்தது சில இடங்களில் எவ்வளோ நாவல் எவ்வளோ பெஸ்ட்டாக இருந்தது இந்த மாதிரியான பல விஷயங்களை யதார்த்தால் பேசியிருக்கேன் அதுக்கப்புறமா யதார்த்தால் வந்து படங்கள் போடும்பொழுது நாங்கள் வந்து என்னென்ன படங்கள் போட போகிறீங்க வந்து இன்விடேஷன் கொண்டு கொடுக்கும் பொழுதும் தனிப்பட்ட முறையும் அந்தந்த படங்களை பற்றி நிறையா பேசியிருக்கார் ஏன்னா அவருடைய முக்கியமான விஷயம் யதார்த்தாவோட இருபத்தஞ்சாவது ஆண்டுக்கு வந்து அவர் தான் நியூ ரியலிஸ்டிக் சினிமா பற்றி பேசுகிறார் இது வந்து யதார்த்தாவுக்கு வந்து நிறைய அதாவது எப்படின்னா ஒரு முப்பது வருஷம் கான்டாக்டர் அமெரிக்கன் காலேஜ் ஃபிலிம் கிளப் எயிட்டி ஒனில் தான் அமெரிக்கன் காலேஜில் ஃபிலிம் கிளப் ஆரம்பிச்சு அதுக்கு மெயினான தோற்றம் வந்து வசந்தனுடைய இதுதான் அவருடைய ஆர்வம் தான் அதை வந்து அசோசியேஷனாக ஃபார்ம் பண்ணி பண்ண அதுக்கு இனாகரேட் பண்ணது வந்து சதீஷ் பகதூரும் Night. And we were introduced to all kinds of world movies like Eight and a Half by Fellini and uh, Akira Kurosawa of Japan and uh, Roman Polanski, both westerns and all that, you know, High Moon, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Gunfight at the OK Coral, all these are all, you know, movies which you would not, would not have imagined uh, seeing them otherwise. But those two of those, you know, getting these films, 
screening then and then after the screening was over there will be a discussion in depth discussion led by mm -hmm. professor vasantham on these uh, films so such movies you know we were able to get an opportunity to see them and uh, madurai thanks to jv sir if drama and film appreciation overtly expressed his aesthetic convictions his sketches and drawings were his deep introspections he drew prolifically celebrating his privacy when he passed away in 2014 nobody realized that he had left behind more than 2500 pieces of his sketches and drawings tucked away in shelves and cabinets many of these no one had ever seen before the primary theme of his drawings was human landscape his architect friend julian smith recalls and although i was interested in the visual landscape i think what Vasantin was always interested in was the human landscape, and then he suggested we go out on his motorcycle, and we just went out into the countryside and took little back roads and had this most amazing time of just exploring the countryside. He would go out on these trips, and he would be fascinated by how people interacted, by people's behavior, and it didn't matter if somebody was a wealthy businessman or a railway porter or a young child or a an aged parent. He he would just make these comments about how. people interacted and about some of the foibles of human existence and i think one of the reasons he was so interested in drawing and in literature and in film and in theater was that he understood that these were places where you did explore the human landscape and that you did it in ways that were specific to your own culture and your own time but at the same time there were patterns that existed across cultures now his works very clearly shows that he had a very sharp perception uh, a person who looked at the world not just for the sake of looking at the world but uh, with a reason and that reason was to you know understand the people around but for a few encounters with noted artists wasn't the never got formally trained as a young boy at kovilpatti He first visited the studio of Kondaiya Raju of Raja Ravi Verma tradition at MCC where he organized an art club as a student he would briefly encounter the veteran artists KCS Panikkar and Santana Raj of Madras School of Art later he would befriend the famous illustrator cartoonist Gopulu of Kumbakonam school as a matter of fact him not having the formal training is what made him very unconditional he was not afraid to do anything so he continued continually experimented and explored he used to you know just like that take a pencil and then draw a sketch and then uh, uh, wash it with indian ink and then use this color paints and then wash it. just it's, it's a magic i would say the magic but then at the back of his mind i think there was you know what is known as the the ingenuity Uh, the epitome of uh, you know originality creativity some fantasy i would say and when you look at his art and when you look at his lines i mean his lines is a world of his emotions and his expressions so when i look at his works i look at his eyes and the eyes you know show a world of sorrow a world of sorrow which seems to you know surge from within him and it you know just comes out on the surface in his uh, in his art and that extreme contrast of black and white shows you know that there is something which is deep down within him which he needed to bring it out and to get it out vasantan did many portraits most intelligent and publicly recognized side of his drawings were his cartoons
Shankar's weekly in its heyday had contracted Vasantan for drawing cartoons. During the emergency in 1970s, he was one of those cartoonists who provoked the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, who eventually forced the closure of the weekly. Vasantan somehow escaped. And he would do drawings of people and he would not only understand how to draw a person, but then he could do a caricature. And as anyone who does cartoons knows a caricature, it's much harder than a realistic drawing because that's when you draw out those qualities of people that people respond to. They see that drawing and they think, aha, yes, that is that person, that, that oversized ego or that humble withdrawal or that smug smile of self-satisfaction. And it's, it's just a wonderful way that he had of bring to the surface those qualities that underlie our shared lives. And uh, he's not afraid to, you know, show what his political inclinations are. And he does it in a, with subtle humor, with biting sarcasm. And uh, when you're looking at it, you feel sorry for the person who is being a cartoon there. But at the same time, you know, you also have your laugh at it. His illustrations were profound. When I first started the Indian Association of Shakespeare Studies, the first journal I told Vasantan, I want your painting in it. This is the first volume which we did. We called it Asian Perspectives and I wanted him to do something on King Lear. And he did a Japanese Leah. He combined his uh, cartoon idiom and the Japanese art form. This is one of the most beautiful Leahs I have ever seen. His illustrations of costumes for plays evoked the right imagination of characters and helped easy internalization. Galileo Galilei ne betul Britain orang ya, orang Nada ham. Anja Nada kat terk udah ini beri umi pung rado, anja Brusher tayar pung rado, awat ada na anpundu pona. Ena abdiya orang Galileo awa beri bicirinda, waranjirinda. Galileo awa se ena parta orang waranjir dengan rado kelia anja asyik orang orang nikir rado. Adi ena kana orang nakeruko, ena orang asyik orang kau tu anje orang dah rado. Ipuri ana orang Galileo awa. His caricatures were greatly amusing. Vocês <laughs> Uh, maybe or or academy na iran tu nala popular art tu kliu series a paint pandra tu popular art tu kliu same the function pandra attitude a vatta ramba ane adha attitude ane ramba pedi chalo. Ellathin thandey or ande ramba constant a experiment pani te iran tu. Vasantan was least hesitant portraying women. However, today he will be accused of male gaze and having objectified women deceptively using his aesthetics. Though he was a liberal, he certainly belonged to a patriarchal order.
Ashrafi seems to accept this male gaze. Portraying women, any man would love to portray a woman because, you know, uh, she is a form that is so sensual. And when I say sensual, it is neither in an erotic or in a sexual sense. But, you know, in the way she is sculpted by the, you know, the higher powers. In the egoist world of art, Vasantan and his friends went around happily egoless. Julian used to talk a lot about American college, a lot about Madre. And Quite often, he'll be talking about one Vasantan. So that's how Julian presented and, and I knew of, of Vasantan through Julian. And he said, you know, very interesting guy. Every now and then something we say, then he said, oh, Vasantan said that, he will say. And he also showed one, some of Vasantan's uh, sketches. See, the, the, the triangle is, Julian is a fantastic artist. And you know, and uh, he is interested in music. He's, he wrote beautifully. And Vasantan is also a, an excellent artist. So we all three shared an interest in art, and there was no, you know, kind of a competitiveness between us or anything. There was only admiration and affection and 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 help. Actually, some of my mother book drawings, you know, uh, Julian. Without Julian, I could not have done the drawings that beautifully because he helped me with the drawings because of my vision problem. முதல்லையே <laughs> Though Vasantan did not want to exhibit his works, he would, however, walk up to any gallery where someone held an exhibition, especially an upcoming artist. Next day, he would write a commentary in the newspaper cheering up the artist. Why did Vasantan draw passionately? Dismissing all acclaim, he would laughingly ask, Are you in blue mood and want out? Well, Here's a panacea for all the ills, art. He just did it because he loved doing it, all of these things. And I know of so many instances where friends and acquaintances uh, have a picture in their house or something that he had written for them uh, or sketched for them. And it, it was just done. There was no ulterior motive to anything that he did in, in that sense. He truly loved what he did and that really comes through which is why I think everything that he did um, resonated so well with people. Now he did not want his uh, art to be marketed because his art had a purpose. Looking at his works and talking to all of you here that's the feeling I have that his art had a purpose and the purpose was to communicate and to express. So he was, he, is now, he cannot be categorized as an artist of the way we look at the artist today in the sense, you know, who does uh, gallery uh, totting, taking his works, selling himself, packaging himself. So uh, that way, you, he's still an artist, but not an artist in the sense we call an artist today. It is better to stand up to live rather than sit down to write in vain, was the dictum Vasantan took from poet Thoreau. Yet he wrote in order to tell stories or share his experiences of the arts he practiced. The first prize-winning story of Vasantan was Tani Mai, written in Tamil in 1957 for the leading Tamil weekly Kalki. All that followed were in English, carried by Caravan, Women's Era, Film Fair and Indian Express weekly magazine. His stories became fewer by the end of 1970 as he seriously launched himself into theatre activities. Then, his commentaries, articles and reviews became prolific and leading dailies like The Hindu and The Indian Express consistently published them. Filmfare continued to patronise him. These publications fall into four categories writings on theatre, film appreciation, art promotion and reflections and comments on music. After his retirement, Vasantan wrote a fortnightly column for about five years in the Hindu called 
down memory lane. Though he drew heavily on nostalgia, he beautifully chronicled the historical memory of his times with unpretentious words and inimitable illustrations and caricatures. It was a genre by itself, the true value of which can be judged only in future. I would say that nobody introduced Dr. Vasanthan to me. I used to read uh, Vasanthan's uh, columns in the Hindu. It was so fascinating and his language style and his cartoon and uh, the description of the villages and down to earth and all thing, these things uh, had really had some kind of impact on me. Then I immediately developed a fancy to meet him. Down the memory lane. They have a lot of archival significance. They capture Madurai life of the 70s and 80s like very much like Manohar Devadas book does. The radical and well acclaimed Tamil writer Jayakantam had a great regard for Vasantan. In 1993, he wanted Vasantan to translate his novel Uru Manidan, Uru Vidu, Uru Ulakam into English. Vasantan, for some reason, did not undertake the project. Vasantan loved children and finally wrote for children. His Jayabalan stories with his own illustrations became a big hit. And he could see from the eyes of a child. And that we have seen in all his cartoons and paintings for children's stories, Dhanapal stories and other stories. The King J. Balan stories were a many layered project, right? It's suitable for children, but it had so many layers to it. It was political satire. It was also excellent illustration. It was well written. It, there was something for everyone. There were some mature jokes in there. Um, but, but ultimately, it was the child reading it. A letter written to his granddaughter, though personal, carries a universal message for all those who aspire to write. There was one letter that he sent me that was especially profound. Uh, I'd actually like to read it on camera and to share it with the work of the Foundation. Um, he always wrote in th these very ordinary run-of-the-mill books and the most profound thoughts would be contained within. Uh, but I just sent him a collection of poems and part of my, my novel to be at this time. I think I was around eight years old and this is what he responded to me. You could see that mix of, of um, cheerleading and critiquing. He says, Amama and I were simply overwhelmed by your style of writing. The effective way you use words is simply stunning. Obviously you have all the makings of an excellent writer. But sometimes it takes a lot of experiences to give the raw material for a novel or even a novella. The intensity of feeling can sometimes mar the necessary detachment for fluid writing. You have to absorb the feelings of day-to-day -day experiences and then distill them into a palatable form. This is what Wordsworth described as emotion recollected in tranquility. That is, the emotion settles down when you are in a reflective mood and then recreates itself in a digested communicative form. Anything written at the heat of the moment is likely to be too hot to handle. Reflection when in repose is the key to good writing. So don't be impatient. The time and the inspiration will eventually arrive to make you a writer of note. Of this I am certain and proud too. Keep writing as and when you can. It will be good. It will be a good exercise for what is to come. With students and colleagues, Vasantan was too gentle, but his influence was as abiding as poetry. He had a very major influence in my life at that time when I was not even an undergraduate student yet. Because when I, was, when I just entered college, he opened up and broadened my horizons. And made me understand that you need to have an open mind and learn uh, things which I never thought about or ever conceived about. And that helped me to find my own uh, way forward in life. And subsequently, the political part, he was not part of that, but it is this initial broadening of the horizons which he helped me acquire that took me later to a a political ideology or a political path which I chose later. 
and I think I am uh, uh, not an artist worth the name, but my association with him inspired me. I would say in two dimensions, you know, uh, he inspired me. One is by his warm personality and throwing challenges. என்னை பொறுத்தளவில் ஒரு கன்விக்ஷனே இருந்தது என்ன நீங்கள் கேட்டிங்கன்னா வாட் எவர் ஐ ஆம் டுடே இட்ஸ் ஓன்லி அன் எக்ஸ்டென்ஷன் ஆஃப் வாட் ஈ கேவ் கேவ் டு மீ ஒன் திங் யூ நோ தீஸ் ஆர் பீப்புள் ஹூ வென் யூ ஆர் மை யங் அண்ட் இம்ப்ரெஷனபிள் ஏஜ் தே ஓப்பன் அ நியூ விஸ்ட் ஆர் டு யூ இன் லைஃப் ஐ ஃபீல் மை செல்ஃப் ஃபார்ச்சுனேட் டு ஹேவ் இன் அன் அமெரிக்கன் காலேஜ் வென் ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஜே வி வாஸ் தேர் ஃபார் அ பாய் ஹூ இஸ் கோன் க்ரோன் அப் இன் அ வெரி ஷெல்டர்ட் அட்மாஸ்பியர் இன் அ பர்டிகுலர் ஸ்கூல் getting exposed to different kinds of people and different kinds of thoughts some of them contrary not not the usual talk that you are used to not being judgmental a sense of very very conscious right and wrong or what one normally gets used to as right and wrong and how those could be questioned and more by osmosis than by actual talking i would think was a huge opportunity cinema vandu epdi paakano வெகுஜனன் சினிமா எப்படி பார்க்கணும் வெகுஜனன் சினிமாவில் இருக்கக்கூடிய நுவான்சஸ் எல்லாம் எப்படி எப்படிலாம் எடுக்கணும் அதில் என்னென்ன பாலிடிக்ஸ் இருக்குது என்னென்ன மாதிரியான விஷயங்கள் இருக்குங்கிறது எல்லாத்தையுமே நமக்கு சொல்லி தந்தது வந்து வசந்தன் சார்னுடைய இதுதான் காரணம் வந்து நேரடியாக நான் அவர்கிட்ட படித்ததில்லை ஆனால் வந்து தொடர்ந்து எனக்கு ஒரு குருஸ்தானத்துலேருந்து பல விஷயங்கள் கற்றுக் கொடுத்துருக்காரு ட்ராயிங் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ்ன்னு சொல்லி மதுரையில் முதல்ல கொண்டு வரணும்னு வந்தேன் அப்போ நான் ஒரு சின்ன அளவில் அந்த பிஸ்னஸ் பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருந்தேன் எனக்கு வந்து அவர்கிட்ட இருந்து படிக்கிறதுக்கு ரொம்ப ஆசையாக இருக்கும் எதனாலேனா அவர் அமெரிக்கன் காலேஜுக்குள்ளே இதில் தங்கி இருக்கும்போது கூட அவர் இருந்த ரூமில் மட்டும் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸாக குமிஞ்சிருப்பாங்க அந்த ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் நானும் உள்ள உட்காந்துருப்பேன் இதே இது பக்கத்தில் இருக்கிற ப்ரொஃபஸர் யாருமே பசங்க போக மாட்டாங்க தாண்டி போவாங்க அந்த மாதிரி இருந்தது எனக்கு ரொம்ப பிடிச்சிருந்தது எனக்கு வந்து ட்ராயிங் மெட்டீரியல் தான் என்ன டிஃப்யூசர் என்ன ஸ்ப்ரே டிஃப்யூசர் அப்படிங்கிற ப்ராடக்டை பற்றி அவர் தான் எனக்கு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணி சொல்லிக் கொடுத்தாரு அது மாதிரி கலர்ஸ்னால் என்ன என்ன கலர்ஸை எதை இதில் யூஸ் பண்ணுறது இதெல்லாம் அவர்கிட்ட ஒரு ஒரு பெரிய ப்ரொஃபஸர்கிட்ட படித்த அனுபவம் தான் எனக்கு இன்றைக்கி லைஃப்பில் நான் வந்து மார்க்கெட்டிங்கில் இருந்தேன் முதல்ல சின்ன லெவலில் அப்புறம் அதே ப்ராடக்ட்ஸை நான் பண்ணேன் பாம்பேலேருந்து தரவழைச்சி விற்ற ஊருக்கே பாம்பேக்கே இங்கே செஞ்சு அனுப்புனேன் இன்றைக்கி இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் லெவலில் பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருக்கேன் இன்னொன்று அட் பார் ஆஃப் த யூரோப்பியன் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருக்கேன் அந்த அளவுக்கு நாலேஜுக்கு ஒரு ஒரு பேஸ் வந்து சார் கூட எனக்கு பழகினதெல்லாம் அது ஒரு முக்கியமான ஒரு காரணம் Finally, Vasanthan would inspire the direction for the development of a new pop genre in Madurai. He had this kind of uh, knack or I don't know how to call this, a kind of an instinct to find out from each student that student has something to give it to the world. That student should be inspired to go on that line. I don't know how he found out about that. Probably that's his uh, innate nature. that's how i got encouraged really really encouraged a lot see what we saw from the productions of mr vasanthan and being there and watching him and advising us and directing us and everything <clears throat> definitely i saw a third direction because uh, in my music what i started doing how i can bring in something from outside to our culture the cultural similarities how it can be taken in my songs here is a song it looks very dramatic to me i could visualize the entire song you know the girls are coming to visit their husbands who are in the prisons they had spent the time they're going back home you know they're going to miss them for another month or two you know it's like this the song goes like and the part la vandu yandra comes miss rosy tell me how do you know i can tell her by the apron and the dress she wore அதோ வருது என் ரோஜாப்பு எப்படி தெரியும் சொல்லு அவள் அடையாள சின்னம் சோப்பு ஜாக்கெட்டா மல்லிகை கொண்ட கூந்தல் கையில் ஜெயில் பாசு அவள் வாடரிடம் சொன்ன மச்சான பாக்கணும் சோ இட்ஸ் அன் இட்ஸ் அன் அடாப்டேஷன் சோ திஸ் இஸ் டெஃபினெட்லி ஐ மீன் बिकॉज आफ्टर सीइंग समथिंग लाइक दिस काइंड ऑफ प्लेज एंड प्रोडक्शंस द You, you start i mean getting these ideas how you can integrate it your own culture to make it more up, you know attractive and will draw the attention of the audience 
it started happening. That was the third direction you mentioned. That's beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah. In that way, one of my songs called Varadachanai Vendam, much appreciated by Vasanthan. Varadachanai Vendam Vasantha Venu Vasantha Irindata Varavetu It's always I would like, I mean, see my Guru, Mr. Vasantha, on the stage in the class, in the podium, or on the stage directing us and sitting on the stage. There are occasions when I am on the stage that he would come to regularly all the concerts. I was really touched by that. Kati Kulvadukku Kasu Ketpena It's really nice. You know, how many gurus can come and listen to your concert and wave at you. I am here for you. You know, that was, I always felt the same. And in that way, this caricature came about of me singing on the stage. Kanji Uttama Tena Varadachana Venda Vasantha Venu Vasantha Irindata Varave Tonu Vasanthan's creative journey essentially lay in his interrogation of the West, but holding strongly to the roots. So if you really look at it, he, he was very rooted. He hardly traveled. Uh, almost his entire life was spent uh, in Madurai. He was really simple in that sense. To me, the most remarkable thing about Vasanthan was that he actually understood North America, he understood England, Ireland. He understood the world better than anyone I've met, and yet he did that from his base, in, particularly in Madurai, where he used that place to look out at the world. As a creative person, Vasantan looks complete and wholesome. However, his associates and critics would always try to scratch the surface in order to probe the mysterious in him. There is so much in his works, you know, that speaks a volume about his life. There is pain and there was pain, uh, which he harbored it in his heart and it becomes very obvious in his works. And that black and white, uh, you know, poignantly speaks about the darker side of his life, which he has tried to, I would say, suppress no, not suppress, but to conceal it, you know, from the world outside. And he has done it very cleverly, he has done it very craftily, and he has done it very artistically. He struck me as a very bright and articulate person, but there was this um, melancholic expression in him. Theatre is often looked upon as therapeutic, you know, so it's quite possible that he went into theater motivated by these issues that he was. Vasanthan's strength is his sense of humor. He had abundant sense of humor. And most of his plays were comedies. He never chose anything tragic, very much like his life. What did Vasanthan conceal? What was melancholic and tragic in him? Or in other words, what emotional and social material did shape this English teacher? The year was 1935. The place was Kovilpatti, located 100 kilometers south of Madurai. As a center of cotton trade and textile manufacturing, Kovilpatti was in the colonial metropolitan loop and was modern in several ways. Here in the colonial court, Vasanthan's maternal grandfather, J.D. Abraham, practiced as a lawyer. He was affluent. He had a palatial house built in the bungalow street where the town's elite, like the Zameen and the sub-collector, lived. As the turn of events would have it, that year, Vasanthan's mother Hilda Peter would leave her husband and come to live with her parents after a child was born. Born on 8 November 1935, 
Vasantan was just a month old. Hilda would never again leave her parental home. Vasantan would grow into his childhood and boyhood in Kovilpatti. Absence of father was bound to create a deep sense of lack in the growing child. But this would be overcompensated by others. Grandfather Abraham and Grandmother Jessal, Mother Hilda, Aunts Enola and Marjorie, and Uncle Baskar. Hilda was young, lovely, and highly talented. A small town of India in the 1930s and 40s should have posed serious problems for Hilda, living separate from her husband. But she would move into the public domain. Opting to work in the local board school, Hilda was determined to face life. One day, little Vasantan would sit in her class. His benchmate in 6th standard, Ramasami, would recall this after 69 years. Both myself and Vasantan were, uh, were classmates uh, before uh, Hilda beat him. Grandfather J.D. Abraham himself was a product of Madras Christian College, graduating around 1900. He was a textbook model of colonial elite and a man of great literary taste. He filled his personal library with Shakespeare, Dickens, Mark Twain, Jane Austen, George Eliot, Shaw and A.G. Wells. He received tidbits and strand straight from London. He was in the court in the morning, played tennis in the evening and actively promoted the local literary association. After dinner, he read to his family his favorite authors. Little Vasantan enjoyed it. This would set the trajectory for his literary taste. Liar, sir. Liar, And our is a gathered in books of putting our party of books over Tani is our children. For library, Martani, I think. But in the other, and even a the poor time passing at that. Tata learned the alarm. Mother, the alarm, a poem, a person English. Tamil and while or other. Vasantan's aunts treated him with music. Writing in the Hindu, Vasantan would recall, I had an aunt, she sang and played piano. I stood by the piano and listened to her avidly. She pinched my cheek and made faces at me as she briskly tinkled the piano key. Vasantan no doubt drew his first inspiration to draw from none other than his mother Hilda. She could draw and paint. Not only did she encourage the boy to draw, but also arranged to send him to Kondeya Raju, who had put up his studio at Kovilpatti. But the contact was brief. Oh, mother, I was interested in going to Kondeya Raju. He was interested in going to Kondeya Raju. He was interested in going to Kondeya Raju. He was interested in going Maximum cartoon is just in there. Hilda would strive to intellectually equip the boy. She would read poetry and paint colors even into his prayers. On his ninth birthday, she will ask her little son to say this prayer. Thank you, dear Jesus, for all the lovely things, for the stars, flowers, and sunshine, and every bird that sings. Watch me while I sleep tonight and help me all the day. Bless the people that I love, take their cares away. Make me like the sun's bright rays, shining everywhere. Dearest Lord in heaven above, hear my little prayer. Amen. The scrapbook will also tell how progressive the family atmosphere was. Vasantan was encouraged to face the harsh reality of the absence of father. Some elder would write for the nine-year-old boy, Dear little Vasantan, be thou a duteous son. Make up to her whose all art thou, for what thy father faileth now. The emotionally fast-maturing Vasantan would write at 14 in the same scrapbook, Dear friends, something, somewhere, somehow, sometime, in plain optimistic rhyme, just say a word of remembrance true, that I may ever remember you. Drawing doesn't matter, for it makes it only better. Colonially modern Kovilpatti of 1940s was much ahead of other towns in terms of art, culture and sports. Who would believe that the veteran Olympian and hockey wizard Dhyan Chand came to Kovilpatti to train the youth? 
Vasantan would recall proudly, I was able to play hockey with the wizard several days. The neighborhood was equally vibrant. Balasundar's brother and next door neighbor will become the closest friend and the most important influence on Vasantan. Joseph was a maverick, passionately involved in drama and cinema. He will take Vasantan to MR Radha's touring drama. Joseph would stay for days with Radha's troupe. Later, along with Joseph and Balasundar, Vasantan would travel 100 kilometers by train to see Nawab Rajamanikam's Puranic plays at Madurai. அடிக்கடி <laughs> அங்கேயும் போகிறது ராம்சாமி தேட்டருக்கும் போகுது நாலு நாளைக்கு இருக்க மாற்றிடுவான் படம் மாற்றிடுவான் வசந்தன் ஓல்சோ லேர்ன் கர்நாடிக் மியூசிக் டாமிங் டாப் தான் சொல்லுவாங்க வாத்தியா டாம் சொல்லுவாங்க ஆக்சுவலாக முதல்ல வந்து சொல்லிக் கொடுத்தது வசந்தனுக்கு தான் ஆரம்பித்தார் அப்புறம் ஜானையும் சேர்ந்தது நல்லா நல்ல வயலு சொல்லிக் கொடுத்தாரு ஆனால் ரெண்டு பேருமே படித்தாங்க கடைசி வரைக்கும் படிக்கல ரெண்டு பேரும் போயிட்டு பக்கத்து தான் இவர் வீட்டுக்கு அடுத்த வீட்டுக்கு அடுத்த வீடு Very early, Vasantan became interested in writing too. When he was around 12, he would run a handwritten children's magazine, Jagat Jodi, later renamed as Deepam. Janaki would write the manuscript. The gang, as it grew, became a bit rowdy too. They would playfully stop and engage none other than Nadaswaram wizard Karakurichi Arunachalam in the middle of the street and get entertained. இந்த இந்த ஸ்ட்ரீட்டில் கடைசியில் தான் கார் குறித்த அண்ணா சொல்ல இருந்தார் எங்களுக்கு ரொம்ப க்ளோஸ் அவர் பார்த்தாங்கன்னா இந்த குரூப் கொஞ்சம் இங்கே கொஞ்சம் ஸ்ட்ராங்கான குரூப்புன்னு சொல்லி அவர் எந்த ஊர் போனாலும் சரி யூட்டிலிட்டி பிளிமத்து வேணும் வேணால் போவார் அங்கே வந்து நிறுத்திடுவார் நிறுத்திட்டு இறங்கி நல்லா புஷ் பண்ணிட்டு தான் வருவார் வந்தாலும் வந்து இறங்கிட்டு வந்து என்ன எல்லாம் அங்கே இருக்கேன்னு சொல்லி பேசிட்டு இருந்தோம் ஒரு பதினஞ்சு நிமிஷம் பத்து நிமிஷம் பேசுவார் அட் ஃபோர்டீன் வசந்தன் வாஸ் ஃபுல் ஆஃப் கரிஸ்மா அண்ட் பாப்புலர் அமாங் ஆல் He was happy and all set for a big takeoff. Then fate would strike like a thunderstorm. Balasundar, after 65 years, recollects the story. That's one thing I can't judge. I'm going to get a purse for two years. I'm going to get a purse for two years. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. I'm going to get a purse for a purse. ரெண்டு நாள் தான் சார் ஆச்சு நான் அதுக்கு முந்தின நாள் போய் பார்த்துட்டு அந்த பர்ஸ் ரெட் கலர் அதில் ஒன்றும் அதே மாதிரி எழுதிச்சுக்கிற மாதிரி இருந்தது நான் அதை எழுதி வந்துட்டேன் 
வந்து காலையில் ஸ்கூலுக்கு போகிறதுக்கு முன்னாடி வீட்டில் விட்டு கொடுப்போம்னு சொல்லி நான் வெளியே போகிறேன் வெளியே போனால் பில்டர் மேடம் வந்து ஜட்கால் ஏறுறாங்க தாங்கி பிடிச்சி ஏற்றுறாங்க எனக்கு அத்தியமாக ஏன்னா எப்படி இருக்காங்க நீங்கள் அப்புறம் நான் பின்னாலே ஓடி போய் டீச்சர்னு காமிச்சேன் சிரிச்சுக்கிட்டே வச்சிருன்னு சொல்கிறாங்க குதிரை வண்டியில் போகிறப்ப இங்கே வீட்டை விட்டு வெளியே போகிறாங்க நான் அந்த கேட்டு போயிட்டேன் வச்சிருன்னு சொன்னாங்க அப்புறம் தான் என்ன தெரியல ஒன்றும் தெரியல அப்புறம் இவனை பார்த்து இவனையும் காணும் அதுக்கப்புறம் நான் ஸ்கூலுக்கு போயிட்டு நான் எக்ஸாம் சார் ஸ்கூலுக்கு போயிட்டு எக்ஸாம் போய் நான் வரேன் அப்போ தான் ஸ்கூலில் ஸ்ப்ரெட் ஆச்சு இந்த மாதிரி டீச்சர் அறந்து போயிட்டாங்களா Vasanthan joined American College in 1951 for his intermediate class as a dhoti-clad small town boy. Language and literature was Vasanthan's passion. Ironically, his artistically inclined family would force him into natural science. Bitterly he would complain, "They have sent me here to cut open frogs and cockroaches, which is not my idea of good life." Driven more by cultural appetite than academics, Vasanthan would endlessly explore the cultural landscape of Madurai. His favorite haunt was Meenakshi Temple. He would befriend Sivakarar, a Saivite sage, who would tutor him on temple architecture for the next two years. He would madly attend the concerts of Madurai Maniyar, T. N. Rajaratnam Pillai, and Mysore Chaudhaya, and fall in love with Lalita, Padmini, and Kumari Kamala, the Bharatanatyam artists. The cinema theaters of Madurai would become other temples of his worship. In real life, he would seriously fall in love with the principal's daughter and get disappointed too. Of course, when the final examinations came, he simply absconded. He would not complete his intermediate course that year. His wanderlust would take him to Madras, Bangalore, and Secunderabad. At Secunderabad, he would earn a job as a visualizer in an advertisement company. Leaving it, he would join the Indian Express as a sub-editor. After four full years of experimenting, Vasanthan would return to American College for his BA in 1957. We did uh, BA together and uh, in the English classes we used to sit next to each other while the teacher, teacher, we used to crack jokes because he, he was a brilliant student and uh, I was the most backward student. But this time, life would not be the same. His grandfather, J.D. Abraham, would die. Vasanthan would face financial hardship. He told me one thing. There was a time when he, star had, he starved for seven days and no financial help. That was really heartbreaking when he told me that. When the results came, He would not believe that he hit the headlines of the newspapers as a first rank holder. And then the day the uh, BA results were out, he didn't have money to even buy the newspaper. So he walked all the way, five kilometers hungry. He went to his cousin's house and told him to buy the paper. Then they searched and searched for his number, they couldn't find it. His number was on the top headlines. What is the story behind his marriage? He married Padmini, the third daughter of Dr. G. S. Sudarshanam and Sundaramma. Dr. Sudarshanam was a senior doctor in the Nizam service in Hyderabad and was a native of Andhra Pradesh. Sundaramma was from Odisha. 
his aunt uh, uh, asked for my hand. She took a fancy to me. She liked me very much. And she asked my parents whether they are willing to, uh, to arrange for it. So my parents told her, you ask him to come over, we'll meet him and then decide. So during Christmas holidays, he came. And then of course, uh, we chatted for some time. He kept on looking at me. <laughs> And he liked me very much. And then he told his aunt, I like her. I too liked him. For Vasantan, family was the mainstay. The gentle and sublime Padmini would allow so much space for her domineering and bohemian husband to be on his own. She is the perfect foil to him. And so together they made a fabulous team because he was the extrovert, the speaker, the creative genius, and she was his admirer, uh, faithful, a uh, follower of all his instructions. I used to appreciate a lot. And I used to allow him, give him space so that he can pursue his talents. And I did, I was never demanding, uh, cooperating and helping mm -hmm. that way. Despite the great love and affection Basantan extended to his children, he proved to be an awe-inspiring father. He had a very exacting uh, expectations of us uh, but all we wanted to do was please him you know if my dad was proud of us in the moment there was nothing that we required more than that so for us that was the benchmark his approval was the benchmark but I had won a, a contest for a short story writer a short story writing contest and he read the story and he was so taken up by it he would show that one short story to everybody and praise it so highly that I couldn't write anything after that because I I was so scared of his disapproval or any shortcoming that I might have for Vasantam what was an expectation of a father of his daughter was quite different from that of the expectation of a son. But he had such a high standards for Suraj because he felt a man should be manly and you know he wanted him to grow up in, in a tough way. You know those he wanted to see in a very visible way in Suraj because he was the boy. Vasantan would make his son Suraj an apprentice in the two-wheeler workshop run by his former student Noor. படித்தாரும் <laughs> How would Suraj explain his relationship with his father? Tumultuous would be a good way to describe my relationship, our relationship. Uh, 
it was it was because I had my own way of looking at things, my own lens, and uh, so naturally there was conflict. Uh, but if you really look at it, I possibly inherited that from my father uh, because he himself was uh, fiercely independent way of looking at things, which probably uh, was why he was so original and uh, and true. There were no lengthy discussions about uh, career or say financial planning or anything like that. Uh, it was largely about things that interested us, uh, common ground like books, films, and, and we used to share a lot of jokes as well. He had a he had a humor, sense of humor that was a little off center, and and it was we had great times, uh, just cracking up about simple things. Vasantan would sober down much when he became a grandfather. The overwhelming feeling is just one of pure effusive love for his grandchildren. He just took delight in everything we did and all our little antics and our silliest jokes. Um, he just delighted and, and showed us so much love and adoration and uh, never ceased to, um, to, to be engaged with us, never got bored of us. And uh, I think that love of his was most strongly expressed in his genuine support of our creative ventures. Anything we did uh, that showed a spark of creativity, he was there to support it and to, and to uh, nurture that seed and help it grow. When it came to friendship, Vasantan was an enlightened liberal. For him, it was a lifelong commitment. You know, I spent about six years as in his lovely company. And I think that laid the foundation for a, a lifelong relationship, uh, about half a century. No one was excluded for reasons of status or occupation. Friendship for Vasantan meant celebrating memory. Friendship seriously meant transcending ideology. My political affiliation with the Communist Party, uh, he was quite uh, unhappy about it. He felt that I am doing something uh, not exactly what uh, he expected me to or what my mother would have expected me to. So he sort of uh, expressed his uh, disapproval. Uh, but I told him that, you know, I've made up my mind and, and I'm going to do this. And then I moved to Delhi immediately after that. And that is, must be around 2006. And since then, till the end, uh, I was in regular touch with him. I used to go to Madurai uh, at least once in a year or two years for some party work. And I would go and visit him, meet him and his wife Padmini. And so we renewed our old uh, acquaintance and friendship. His childhood friend Ramasamy came along with Vasantan to do his intermediate course at American College. He would become a grassroots communist activist and even suffer custodial torture. But the warmth and intimacy between the two were never lost. I was uh, having some connection with the uh, communist leaders, Nallavan, Pandian. Somebody included my name in the FIR in a murder case. And I was uh, tortured. And I was uh, beaten by uh, police. Uh, you were spoiled your life, mother. Uh, even though we differ in principle, 
we will uh, exchange the views and ideas, but we will, have, we will not be fighting with each other. I will break my journey on the way to Ternalveri or Tutukudi. I will get down here and leave my luggage at a cloak room and come here and have some uh, tea and uh, one hour uh, uh, discussion and leave from here. For Vasantan, it also meant holding grand vision about others. I first met uh, Vasantan when I was uh, 21, a young person just arriving on the American College campus. Within a few months, we had become great friends, and that was a friendship that lasted for more than 40 years. As he met Julian, Vasantan would write in 1975, I wouldn't be surprised if after some years we hear that he changed the skyline of America. He is the stuff that Time Magazine stories are made on. True to his prophecy, Julian would go on to become an internationally renowned architect, planner and educator. He would become the executive director of Willow Bank School of Restoration Arts in Canada. In 2007, he was commissioned to restore the World War I Vimy Memorial in France and he would co-author the UNESCO recommendations on historic urban landscape 2011. Equally for Vasantan, friendship was also about borrowing vision from others. Manohar Devadas went nearly blind suffering from retinitis pigmentosa. His wife Mahima remained paralyzed for more than four decades after a car accident. Undeterred by these handicaps, Manohar continued to draw, aided by boyhood memories and inner vision. He also wrote novels. When I had the first book launch at uh, Madurai, the Greenwell years, and Vasantan was totally involved in it, and then he came and had an interview with me, and he wrote a very, very beautiful sensitive, incisive article in the, in the Indian Express. He said, you may be going blind Manohar, but you have taught us all how to see. In another meeting also, in American College, I quoted myself. So with your permission, I would like to quote myself again today. What I said was, you may be going blind, Mr. Devadas, but you have taught us all how to see. That's a, you know, it's a kind of a profound statement and, and it was a very, very, very generous thing to tell about me. Again, it meant celebrating differences and appreciating other points of view. I was a Vaishnavite. He learned everything about Vaishnavism from me. It was so simple in all these matters. And that is again, I should say, a gift for me to have such a good friend, to remember such a good friend. Friendship for Vasantan was honoring others. Friendship for Vasantan was serious fun too. So when I am in Madura, I'll give him a call. Hi, JV, are you free for a spiritual session today evening? He's, he would say, yes, welcome. Where? Then we'll fix up a place. And uh, at his house, behind the cupboard, we had a small corner where we would uh, fill up our glass and enjoy a drink. With retirement, Vasantan would suffer increased isolation. When I asked Vasantan to teach my students of theatre, he said, I can't travel 12 kilometers to go to the university. I said, I want you to teach. I will ask the students to go to your house. Students used to go to Vasantan's house, sit with him and learn theatre. For more than 20 years, we were together after retirement. And uh, only two of us the whole time. So how did you used to spend your time? Oh, we used to watch TV, we used to play indoor games every day. He used to insist on playing indoor games. Yeah. Evening after tea, for one and a half to two hours, we used to play. 
and then go, you go shopping together. And then there were children coming, these flats, lots of children are there. So we used to stock ice cream in the fridge for them. Whenever they used to come, evenings sometimes they used to drop in if they don't have homework. And I used to watch him drawing and I used to appreciate very much. Every time he drew something, he used to come and show me. How is it? Ask for my comments. And writing also. Uh, before writing, especially down memory lane, he used to tell me, this is what I'm going to write. And then he used to write in a notebook. And then uh, I used to dictate and he used to um, write in the computer and send it off. எந்த வகையிலுமே என்னுடைய கணக்கு பார்த்தோம் சொன்னால் ஒரு ஒரு ரூபாய் நாணய அளவு கூட அவர் உயர்த்தலை அவர் என்னவா உள்ள நுழைஞ்சாரோ அதுவாகவே அவர் வெளியே வந்தார் மெனி ஆஃப் தெம் கேம் அண்ட் டுக் அட்வான்டேஜ் இன் ஆர்ட் டைரக்ஷன் ஸோ மெனி திங்ஸ் and then they started ignoring him in the last few 10 years um, even his good friends colleagues and friends also were uh, indifferent and that used to hurt him very much and uh, he tried both of us tried going and visiting them but the, there was no response from them whenever he had disappointments and all that very little he used to tell me but he used to feel a lot and i used to feel bad for him finally his diabetes would hunt him down you know it could have been 7th of uh, december i met him last visited vasantham by then you know his leg had been amputated and i took my harmonica to him and then i played two of the world my favorite hindi songs expected this amputation thing and uh, and that was done and i visited him before the amputation and after the amputation and i was not knowing how he uh, how he would have taken uh, the amputation thing so um, i went to see him and uh, he was in the same old spirit probably in, in inside i don't know how he felt and christmas was coming uh, we sang four or five uh, carols for him and he was very very happy receive our king receive our king let every heart prepare a prepared room and have a nature sing a nature sing and now they were in the amputate panni rendavar appo kuda na i was having some hope ullodi After 1961, Vasanthan went to Madurai to teach. I went to Mumbai and seven years later emigrated to Canada. Over 50 years passed. In late 2013, I was shown an article which Vasanthan had posted on the internet in 2007. It was very flattering to me. I called Vasanthan a couple of times. and we renewed our conversation after a 54 year hiatus but the third time i called his family informed me 
that he was no more. We were different in many ways. I studied sports and games. He studied people. I spoke a hybrid, Sanskritized, Tamil, North Indian accented. He spoke a chaste, pure, South Indian Tamil. He was a smoker. I was not. He ate meat. I was a vegetarian. He was a Christian. I was a Hindu. But these differences only enriched our friendship. As we wandered together in the wonderful city of Madras, or wandered together in the wonderful world of literature, Basantan was a rare and radiant personality. Yes, I knew Basantan. Because for so many years we were together, I miss him so terribly.